Hey everyone, this is Philip Poole, the game director for Dawn of War 3, and I'm here with Jeff Robinson, aka In Control. We're both old school Warhammer fans, so we thought we would have a chat while we painted some figs. Yeah, just to be clear though, you guys thought about the painting part. <laughs> I've played since I was 12, and I did paint back then, but there's definitely in someone's closet a pretty sizable Terranid army that has like red eyes, purple claws, and then black bodies. There you go. Not well, much of a painter. <laughs> well, it's okay. You can talk and I'll paint. Okay. About that? Well, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> this will be a collector's item someday. One of the coolest things for me is just like walking around and kind of meeting the people here and seeing so many models at all the table. Absolutely. One of the things I'm most excited about, just seeing like the Wraith Knight move in the game. Yeah. That's, when people push their models around the table, they're not, they don't think of them as like this, just like moving yeah. forward. They think of them stomping forward. It's a, it's a battle in their mind's eye and yeah. your game kind of brings that to life and I'm excited for them to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, one of the great joys of making this game as a, like an old school Warhammer fan is seeing those models come to life. Yep. Part of our job is to sort of take the things that we fell in love with first and put them front yeah. and center, right? Like, And I feel like you did that. Yeah. I'm, I'm super enthused. And I gotta say too, I think one of the coolest things right off the bat, that video obviously grabbed everyone's attention. Yeah, it's an amazing, absolutely. amazing video. But even like my wife who, she's not into Warhammer, but through me, she kind of knows. Yeah. But she was really impressed. And I, I saw others say this too, you know, Warhammer has come from a long time. There are Sisters of Battle, there are Sisters yeah. of Silence, but otherwise the diversity in Warhammer has been yep. fairly low, but right off the bat with your guys' game, one of the most important characters is a female. Yep, absolutely. And then one of the most important, uh, your chief librarian of the, of the main yep. chapter is also of a different ethnicity. And I think yep. that's, that's obviously you know on purpose, but I think that's really cool. You know, I, I think it's really important to get that diversity of voices, both yeah. in terms of just creating some different points of view, some yeah. different perspectives, and I, th I think it's important behind the keyboard too. But another reason is it's really, it's really important to actually get a literal diversity of, of yeah. literal voices, you know, when... Other than just a bunch of gruff Englishmen? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's true, you know, like four gradations of angry dudes is, <laughs> can get a little taxing. Well, so the Emperor, it, well, the Emperor. Yeah. yeah. When we're done with this, by the way, you got to burn this with fire. This is, this is so bad. The model's gorgeous. My paint. <laughs> if you can good. even call it, it's like a well, watercolor. Well, I mean, I should say that we're sitting down here for 45 minutes or so, so uh, we're only going to get so far in these models. Thank God. With mine. I feel like if, if people were to see the end product of this, they would, uh, they'd have their own like gaze into the warp moment. I think. <laughs> you worked on Dawn of War. And now we're at Dawn of War 3. Yep. So what do you think you've learned over the over the time? Because Dawn of War 1, Dawn of War 2, both older games, but yep. also very different. And, and people have their expectations for Dawn of War 3. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, totally. I, I came to Relic to work on what became Dark Crusade at the time. So I'm not quite, not vanilla Dawn of War 1, but okay. pretty much everything since then. And uh, yeah, it's been a long road, like figuring out uh, different ways to approach both the universe and the RTS gameplay. Like obviously, Dawn of War one and two took you know quite different approaches. And when we sat down to start Dawn of War three, there had been a bit of time already since Dawn of War two, so it allowed us to stand back a bit and try and figure out, okay, what do we want to accomplish? What do we want to do? And one of the things was the sort of large armies yeah. that were more characteristic of Dawn of War one had really stood the test of time, right? Like people really still remember that, so we wanted to recapture that. That led us back to base building. And then there's just been a lot of like examining what we've done before, where the sort of RTS space is now, what we haven't seen, what we want to bring that's unique, and melding that together into a game. I think one of the coolest things you guys have accomplished in, in my mind pretty darn well is I love the idea, especially with it being so iconic in Warhammer, but having your your elites, as you guys call them, but kind of like the, the focal points, Gabriel, these Imperial yeah. Knights, a Wraith Knight, like these are really, really cool, iconic things. Yeah. But I think in a game, it could be very easy for them to be so dominant that in terms of games play, it's like, 
well, yeah, you got that. I don't. I don't stand a chance at all. Yeah. It's really not that case. Like they obviously give an edge and they're incredible, but I love that just raw, you know, as long as you have some of the guys that are, are good at dealing with something that yeah. either has that armor class or is of that type or can kite or something along yeah. those lines. Really good. Like I was playing with Maki yesterday, a great nuker, very good at, you know, range support kind of thing. I would say that balancing act between the line units and the elites is the thing we've spent the most time on is it's that's awesome. just like getting that right is so important. And I think that's, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a good balance too between, in just talking about like the RTS genre and in whole, it's a really interesting genre because the things that some people love about it are exactly what a lot of people hate about it. Like, yeah. like base building, as I'm sure you guys know at this stage, obviously, it's not so simple as like, just make a building that makes guys. You, you can't, you have to really put so much thought into how much time do I want the players spending at their base looking exactly. at it, meticulously deciding, well, if I put this here, is that going to hurt me? And like, you have to simplify it, but also make it complex enough that it serves a purpose. I mean, Dawn of War is always going to be a combat-focused RTS, yeah. right? Like, we have base building, we have economy, but, you know, in the overall spectrum what of the RTS for? genre, <laughs> we are more econ light. Paying attention to the fight going on is always is going to benefit you. That's yep. so that's why we include skill shots, we include positional gameplay yep. is quite important. Pulling back wounded units so they can yeah, replenish is exactly, actually really important. Exactly. I mean, especially with the Eldar who have health shields or battle focus, to yeah. use the, the lore term, knowing when to engage and when to pull them back and, and monitoring that is always going to be to your advantage. It's a real subtle thing too, and but I think part of what I like so much about your guys' emphasis, I guess, between army management and, and yeah. base control is there is a base building aspect, like we said, specifically with Eldar, I feel like there is some pretty cool strategy there. There is risk reward, so there is yeah. decision making there. Um, but units build fairly fast and the economy is, is lax, like it doesn't cap out at something, so if you're not spending that money, you're not yeah. being directly punished for that. That's very subtle, but I found it to be really nice in the game where like, because there's a lot of moments too where you can lose your whole army, it just yeah. happens. But to rebuild that army isn't a 20 minute yeah. slow down. It's fairly quick. And, and because you are focusing on the army, you come back to a bank of, of money you can spend. Yeah, so yeah I like it. exactly. I mean, we, we wanted it to be fairly easy to recover from one of yeah. those wipe moments yeah. that, that do happen if you, you know, get caught against a super unit or something. But there is still a cost. Like, the, oh, yeah. the enemy can still press that advantage. But it's, we w did want to avoid the situation where you're like, well, I lost that engagement. Game over. I'm going to be behind the whole yeah. game, but it's going to take another 25 minutes for me to yeah. lose, right? Like, that is just not fun. You know, I'm, I can't wait to get the whole community playing this game yeah. and see all the crazy stuff they come up with. I just know there's going to be some yes. insane strats that come out there. And, you know, that's, that's part of the fun of building these games. <laughs> So I did get a chance to play um, Mission 6. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. I, I like kind of the unfolding of the mission almost. Like it kind of starts off with a little bit of a stealth feel to it. What made you guys kind of decide to lead with that one as, as one of the, the missions you're going to show off and, and, and well, display Well, even in early days, it was one of the missions that felt most Eldar okay. to me. Uh, the basic concept of the mission is you are Maka, the Farseer, and a small force building a toehold in a space marine territory and sneaking through to get to their base to bring Gabriel to the fore. Yeah. And then the second part of the mission, what I really liked about that is we were able to sort of flip that a bit and have a part of the mission that plays to the space marine strength where they have a heavily fortified area, they have their artillery support set up and you as the Eldar, you need to be really careful and sort of poke in particular areas, find where those hard points are, figure out your strategy to push into there. So it's really iconic in, yeah. in that sense. You know, and it's also a nice echo to the later mission that, but that we showed earlier, the Space Marine mission, where you're playing this like heavy Space Marine strike force punching into Eldar lines. And you really get to see the different ways these two races operate. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, you can I feel it, it too. Like every time I, I got really confident with my spear, you know, Maka, yeah. 
And then I was like, let's just take a straight up fight. Actually, straight up fights against Space Marines, not the best. <laughs> not the best for Eldar, if you can avoid it. Well, we didn't get too, too far in our minis. We got some green down, but um, I'll be painting some more later on. I just want to say thank you so much, yeah. Jeff. This was a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait for the rest of you to be playing Dawn of War 3. This is a galaxy where humans and a whole series of alien races are fighting basically a war that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And you know what's really interesting.